Hey Apple, where are we? I'm at the Apple Showcase and Apple have just dropped the full set of their M4 MacBooks, Mac Mini and iMac. Let's get hands on, this is awesome. So, the MacBook Pro, the Mac Mini, these are, for me, the two you got to choose from this year. It's the nano texture screen that really surprised me about these though. We're seeing a huge increase in power. We're seeing a couple of really exciting computers built around the idea of Apple intelligence. It's looking really promising. Right, the M4 Mac Mini. It might just be the sleeper hit of this entire launch. I know you guys like the power stuff, but this is really cool. Hands on for the first time with the new Mac Mini. It is absolutely tiny. Ports on the front. A ton of ports on the back. It's literally the size of an Apple TV, as Brian Tong clearly showed by flipping out an Apple TV in the room. With the studio display, I think this is an absolute dream setup for your desk. However, that is still a problem. It's powerful enough to render 8K video, run high-end games with ray tracing, and can even outperform the M2 Max found in the Mac Studio. That's wild, it is kind of a baby Mac Studio. And with a starting RAM of 16 gigabytes and various port options like USB-C, Thunderbolt 5 on the Pro chip and HDMI and Ethernet, the Mac Mini is set up to be the ultimate choice for creators, developers, small business owners like me that want that affordable but compelling powerhouse. So yeah, it's really good. They've made the starting price stay at a nice steady level, which means that we could afford something that is powerful. It's hard not to consider this as a permanent desktop setup, really. It brings desktop level power without the bulk price tag of something like the Mac Studio, which is pretty hard to beat. Pair that with like a studio display. Maybe they'll bring out a lower budget one. That would be amazing. Let's see. Okay, hands on with the new M4 MacBook Pro and it's an absolute beauty. This is the space black version. We haven't seen this before on this scalar model. And there's some really nice details in here. I don't own a 16-inch MacBook, but looking at this for editing this week, this is a really good bet. So it is a big laptop, but we're also talking with the M4 Max chip. This is an epic laptop. This is the most powerful laptop I think that has ever existed. In person, the MacBook Pro seems as sleek as ever, especially that new space black finish. It's quite understated. Workhorse vibes, nice to see that on the Pro now. And performance-wise, Apple are making big promises. The M4 Max, for example, boasts a 16-core CPU and an insane 40-core GPU, making it nearly as twice as powerful as the M1 Max that I have. So anyone working with video editing, rendering, high-res graphics, this laptop is going to chew through those tasks 3.5 times faster than my own M1 Max. That is crazy because I've just been editing this, it's good. The new neural engine is a whole three times faster than what we've seen before, so it's gonna boost AI processing and tasks. We should then talk about the display and the battery. I have to say, this shot here is absolutely beautiful. I never thought I would go for a nano texture screen, but that is rather cool. But here is the kicker. There is no compromise on performance, even on battery. So it's just as powerful if you're plugged in or not. I think that's been the case with the Macs for a while, but it's a really good choice. Seems promising. And also my favorite little thing I've noticed about the new M4 MacBook Pro is that six speaker spatial audio playback. If you haven't tried it, I encourage you to go check it out. So make sure you get subscribed so that you can come back next week and see these hands-on back in the Better Creating Studio and see which one of these might suit you. But yeah, it's an exciting time to be a Mac-interested computer user. Apple intelligence. I think Apple aren't simply trying to create an assistant in the background. They want a personal intelligence system integrated through your workflow. They gave us some demos, and you've seen it on the keynote using Scrivener with it, third-party apps. The potential here is huge. It's designed to support generative AI tasks across different apps, native and third party, and it's all processed locally thanks to the M4 local engine. Imagine Siri can understand your personal context and then retrieve information based on what you're working on. All sounds great, and Apple is continuing to focus on soon for Siri, but it does promise that it will give Siri context awareness and the draw on chat GPT within the system soon. So for now, the integration is limited to US English with a rollout for other regions 
by December, like the UK and I think Canada. But in short, this level of personalized AI could be a game changer for making our process is more intuitive when we actually get it outside the US. What do you think on all this? Let me know in the comments, AI or no. So let's just take a moment. This is the first time I've ever come to one of these events. It's pretty wild. You don't have a huge amount of time to take everything in. And uh, this is, I've got to say, one of the coolest things I've done for a little while. I've got to say though, it is the products are really standing out. Apple do a really great job of like putting on experiences, allowing you to kind of test different things. So there's a, a TV set up over there. I don't know if you recognize this. I believe is probably the guitar from Garage Band. Nice. A lovely little update today was the Sleeper MacBook Air update, which got a significant memory bump, starting now at 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is double what the M2 Air offered, all while keeping the price point, yes, at 999 on the base model. That makes it an even better value multitasking, computer for daily life, light to travel with, and with the M4, it gains more of that Apple intelligence capability. So it's still their most popular laptop. It's not surprising. This bump is nice to help people feel like that laptop is an even more fully fledged contender for power use, like video creators, music makers that want that lightweight computing, but still the power. So the iMac has had a bit of a refresh. Uh, they've done most of the work here is on the chip and the ability to now use Apple intelligence. It's a beautiful computer. And actually these new set of colorways, I think are really worth checking out. So if this is your thing, it's a really, really good time to move to the iMac. Personally, I think I'm eyeing up the Mac mini more than this, but it's just a beautiful thing. So if you want to kind of create that, like the vibe that feels right, that makes you want to sit at your desk, that's the thing that gets the friction out of the way, then this computer is for you. So under the hood, the iMac M4 chip is a major upgrade and a 10 core GPU, which means everything from everyday tasks to more demanding creative work are gonna be pretty smooth on it, I think. During the demos, I could see the difference that the new iMac does fly through tasks, even when multitasking between apps. I think the display is still good, a 24 inch 4.5K retina, that's nice to see, as sharp as ever. But the good thing is that you now have the option to add an 8K monitor, I think with the Pro chip, or maybe it's for both, but certainly you can add one as an external monitor. That's really cool. And you can get the nano texture coating for an extra $200 on the existing screen for the iMac. So the iMac starts at $1,299 with higher end models going up from $1,499. The new iMac is kind of sitting comfortably in that gap between a mini for price, but maybe not power, and a MacBook. But yeah, I think you have to know why you want it. So here's a little bonus. While I was in LA, I got an amazing spatial audio experience with the Apple Music team. These guys are super impressive. But what is really cool, and I think a lot of us haven't realized quite how good AirPods and spatial audio really is. We listen to a playlist, artists like Billie Eilish and remastered things like Rocket Man from Elton John. And hearing them, they've got this studio that kind of recreates the spatial audio sound that you get with your AirPods, but in a room. Oh my goodness, I have never heard music so clear and so present. The way it can wrap around you, you can literally control, I'm getting tingle factor thinking about it, look. You can control the way the sound moves around you. They've also can control like sound from above and below. It's really impressive. I also thoroughly recommend if you own AirPods or AirPods 2, that new software update is really quite impressive. You can essentially manage the level of sound to protect your ears. So I use loop earplugs, and I think the AirPods Pro are gonna be my new go-to. Okay, maybe it's not socially the norm to be present with people with transparency mode on. People still find that a bit funny, like, you know, you can see it here. But the cool thing about this is they cranked up the level of the decibels in the room to like about 95 decibels, like super loud. Anything over 80 is, is like bad for your ears. And the AirPods, kept the level that I was hearing exactly the same on a safe level. It's super impressive. It means that if you go to a concert, you might wanna wear your AirPods to hear the quality of the music and not be overwhelmed by the wider sound. And you know, we know this is now a hearing aid thing, but it's much more than that. It works for the people that need it to protect their hearing, the people that need it to lift their hearing. Really exciting. So what are your feelings about the constant upgrade for your business or for your work around the MacBook? I personally think if you are going to upgrade, this is a really good year to do it. 
The chip is way more powerful. It is designed around the AI features that they're bringing out. And with things like the Mac Mini that are just taking desktop computing essentially into your pocket, and you can change out your peripherals later on if you're into keyboards like I am, this is a really great bet. It all remains to be seen how much real world difference we actually get with these. And if the bang for the buck is really there, but certainly from the outside and looking at these things, ports, screens, Thunderbolt 5, the nano texture stuff is great. And seeing these on the front of the uh, iPad mini makes me really happy. Personally, that Mac mini really does have me considering my first desktop only setup. Then again, Space Black MacBook Pro, M4 Max. Oh, maybe I'm gonna lose all my money. Let me know what you're most excited about in the comments and I'll be back very soon when we get some of the Macs in the studio to get hands on and use them properly. So make sure you get subscribed if you're not. And if you wanna go further with Mac or your iPad, I recommend watching one of these videos too. One of them might be that new video already posted. Cool, click my face to subscribe and I'll, uh, I'll see you later. I've got to go and get on a plane and somehow edit this. See ya.